So a few years ago, I posted a video showing how you can add fog, smoke, and mist into your pictures using Photoshop. Now, although people did watch the video, the audio was not good. It does add to the realism, makes it look like he stood there. So I've recorded a completely new version with an even better way to use it. First of all though, what is this cloud, fog and mist effect? Well, I used it a lot when I used to create images like this that I really enjoyed doing. It's a great effect for adding mood and atmosphere. You can even use it for adding dust into your pictures and it doesn't cost anything because it's actually already built into Photoshop, kind of. So here's what we do. Now, if I wanted to add a smoky, foggy kind of feel like in this image, but over on to say this image here, here is what I would do. I would first of all come over to the layers panel and click to add a new blank layer. Then I'll go to the filter menu, choose render and then clouds. Now I don't know about you, but they don't look like the kind of clouds that I see where I live. However, there is something that we can do with it. What I will do is go to the toolbar and get my rectangular marquee tool and I'm gonna drag out a selection just in the middle, something like that will be fine. And then we'll hold down the Command key on Mac, Control key on Windows, and press J to jump that selected area up onto its own layer. So if we now look over in the layer stack, we can see we have three layers, the original image, the clouds, and then this cutout. And if I just turn that Adobe layer off there, you can see this is what we got. In fact, in the layers panel, now we have that, we don't need this one, so we'll just delete it. So clicking back on the selection that we made, I'll then go to the edit menu and choose free transform. And now I'm gonna zoom out. I'm gonna hold down the shift key and the option key on Mac or alt key on Windows, click on one of the corner markers here and drag outwards to make it way bigger, way beyond the boundaries of our actual image. And you can see now what did look Nothing like smoke and fog now starts to look like smoke and fog. Now at this point here, you might want the smoke or the mist to be a bit brighter. So what you could do here, rather than using an adjustment layer, we'll just do this directly on the, uh, on the actual effect here. So we'll go to the image menu, adjustments and levels, and we'll just bring in the whites to brighten those up. And let's just bring over the blacks as well and play around with these mid-tones. So we can start to see a bit of separation now in that bright area, which is gonna be our fog, misty kind of look. And then we'll click OK. Now at this stage, what we can then do is just either lower the opacity and bring it in like that, or just to make sure that we get rid of all the dark areas on the actual effect, is just go to the blend mode and change it to screen. That now means that all of the dark areas are gone, we're only left with the light areas. And then we'll just lower the opacity down to taste, something like around about there is good. See the effect in the lower part, Obviously the lower part is where we're gonna want it. We don't want it so much on the top. So then I'll add a layer mask. What I'll then do is grab a brush from the toolbar and I'm gonna use a black foreground color, but in the options bar at the top of the screen here, rather than having the strength of the brush at the opacity of 100%, I'm taking it down to around about 20%. So then I can just kind of paint over it to remove it just gradually in certain areas. So although, I am removing it, it's not completely gone in areas, it's gonna be a little bit patchy, which is obviously how the fog and the misty effect would be. And again, just playing around with that opacity to kind of get it in there to taste. Okay, so that's how we can use the effect for adding in fog, smoke, and mist to our pictures. But what else can we do? What would happen if we combined this with a technique I showed in an earlier video using the blend if sliders? Check this out. Here's a photograph I took with my drone of a place called Lyme Regis. Now, obviously when flying a drone, there's a legal limit to the height you can fly at. In the UK, it's 400 feet or 120 meters. So we're rarely, if ever, gonna be amongst the clouds. But maybe we can use this effect to make it look as if we were. So again then, just like before, I'm going to add a new blank layer. Then I'll go to the filter menu and choose render and clouds. Then I'll get my rectangular marquee tool and drag out a selection in the middle area, something like that. Hold down the command key on Mac, control key on Windows and press J to jump that up onto its own layer and then we'll delete from the layer stack this original clouds layer and click on the layer where I've created that cutout. 
Then go to the Edit menu and choose Free Transform. Zoom out. Hold down the Shift key and Option on Mac or Shift and Alt on Windows. Click on one of the outer corner handles and drag out to make it a lot bigger. So go for something like that. In fact, let's just go a little bit further on that as well. Something like that's good. Zoom in and I can use my Move tool now to kind of click and drag around where I want this to be placed. I'll go for something like that. We can then go to the image menu, adjustments and levels, and we'll brighten up these clouds because at the moment they're obviously very, very dull and gray. So we'll click on the whites and drag those over to really brighten them up, not too much so that they clip. But around about there will be good. Let's drag in the blacks and we can play around with the mid-tones to add a bit more separation. Something like that is looking good. And then we'll click OK. Now we could then just use the blend mode to uh, reveal the area below, but we're going to do something different that's going to give us a lot more control. So let's just go back to normal. I'll get my crop tool and drag out the crop over the top of the image. And you can see when I do that, all of these pixels around here of the huge cloud layer that we've just created. I don't actually need that. So what I will do at the top in the options bar, I will just put a tick where it says delete cropped pixels, then press enter or return to remove those completely. I'll then drag out the crop so you can see they're now completely gone. Now with this layer, what I'll then do is come over to the right hand side where we've got the uh, layer name where it says layer two. In fact, let's just rename that to clouds. To the right hand side of it, I'm just going to double click to bring up the layer style properties here where we have the blend if sliders. Another way you can get that is at the bottom of the layers panel where we've got the FX icon. Click on that, then click on blending options and you'll see it brings it up as well. And it's this area down here, the blend if sliders that we want. In fact, let me just zoom in on this so you can see it a bit clearer. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to only use the one that's called this layer because we want to reveal the clouds on this layer so that we can see the area below. And what we have is the dark parts of the, uh, the layer on the left, the lighter parts on the right hand side. And obviously this is the clouds. We want to remove the darker parts. So I'm going to take this marker here over on the left hand side and start to drag it over to the right. And as I do that, keep an eye on this main workspace area here to see what happens to the image. I start to drag it over to the right and as I do that, you can see that the dark areas start to disappear, only leaving the lighter areas on that layer. And if I kind of take it to around about say, I don't know, something like that possibly, that could be our clouds at the moment, but you can see they look very, very defined. They need to be a lot fluffier to be more realistic and we can do that really easily. All I need to do is come back into this blend if where we have the marker that we've just moved, it's got a vertical line going down the middle. If I hold down the Option key on Mac or Alt key on Windows, I can separate so it comes into half like this. And then I can drag each of these markers now left and right to separate them. And as I do that, can you see now how it's actually softened the outside? So now they are starting to look a lot more like clouds should do. I can separate them. The more I separate them, the more I can affect how those clouds appear. All right, so I'll leave it as something like that for now and then just click OK. Now, the problem we've got here is we've got a picture of Lyme Regis, this area, taken from the drone at an angle coming down into the harbour. The clouds I've just added are very flat and two-dimensional. It's just a layer that I've put straight on top of the image. They don't follow the line that that camera was doing for taking the photograph. So we need to kind of change the perspective of the clouds to follow the angle of the original camera shot. This is how we do it. What I will do is I'll go to the edit menu, choose transform and then perspective. When I do that, we can see we get the handles going around the outside and I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. And what I'm going to then do is click on either the bottom left or the bottom right. Now, as I do this, look what happens to the clouds. I'll just drag out to the left. Can you see that? <laughs> can you see how it's it kind of like lifts them up, so it's changing this perspective completely. Let me just zoom out just a little bit more so I can go further to the side. But look, as I go further out, it's really lifting those clouds right up now so that they are now following a much more believable perspective of how those clouds would be had we kind of photographed coming down through them from the sky. I can then go to the crop tool. Let's just crop that out. And then I'm going to get free transform and just resize it. I can make it bigger or smaller. I can reposition them, something like that maybe. 
Let's go for something like that. And the great thing is because we use this blend if slider version to see through the actual clouds rather than just using the blend mode, I can come over to the layers panel. Here we have the icon. If I double click on that, it brings me back into the blend if where we have the original position of the markers. So again, I can come in and start to affect these to play around with how much or how little cloud I want to be visible in my picture. So I'm going to go for something like that. Let's make it a bit more of a foggy kind of look. There we go, as we're looking through the cloud. So click OK. And there we go. We could also make changes to it by going back to the image menu, adjustments, levels, and playing around with the whites to make them more visible, or actually the darks to make them even less visible because that blend if removed the darks and left the light areas. And of course, what you could also do is just add a layer mask to the clouds there, get a brush with a black foreground color. And if you wanted to reduce it on the lower part of here, you could then just brush off just to kind of come through them just a little bit more. So even more control adding those clouds in. So there's before, after, before, after. Now I just love experimenting with Photoshop. It's just amazing what you can come up with when you just approach it with the mentality of what would happen if. But that's all for this video. So thank you for watching. As always, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, click on the subscribe button. That goes a long, long way in helping support this channel. But at the time this video is going out, it is literally just over one week until this. The Photoshop Virtual Summit 4. Now this is a free online Photoshop training event that runs for five days from May the 2nd through May the 6th, 2022, with 40 Photoshop classes from 20 instructors and over 30 hours of video tutorials from folks such as Aaron Nace from Flern, Jesus Ramirez from the Photoshop Training Channel, Photoshop Hall of Famers Dave Cross and Matt Kloskowski, Hollywood movie poster retoucher Lisa Carney, yours truly, and more. Now this is the link to go and get a free pass available from the 1st of April, and I've also included that in the description. Right, that's me, I'm done. I'll see you in the next video.